Welcome to another video on my channel. This is going to be a different video than a lot of the other videos I've made. I'm an author. I do a lot of travel videos, a lot of writing videos, and they talk about cultural experiences, etc. sometimes. But recently, I saw a TikTok. It is not too late to quit your job, leave your boring life, and come live in Yellowstone National Park for a summer. We are still hiring for summer positions, and I promise you it will be the best summer of your life. And I responded to it with a stitch, and that TikTok is still low-key going viral and i basically responded with my experiences as a seasonal worker in the summers of 2014 15 and 16 and i talked about some of the things that people should be very wary of because in seasonal work it's very much pitched to people as this dream job as a way for you to travel for you to live somewhere else but there are a lot of ways that people can be exploited in these situations that might be reminiscent of woofing or working as a volunteer at a hostel, things like that. And so I felt that it was really important to inform people. I can say that when I published an article, an essay, it was one of the first essays I ever wrote in 2017 with Outside Magazine. I talked about a lot of my negative experiences working as a seasonal worker in Montana specifically. And that essay went viral. It had one of the Mythbusters liking it. I got, I, I had people from all over the world reaching out to me and apologizing for racism. To break down seasonal work, because I'm a seasonal worker, because I'm black, and I haven't really heard any black people talk about this in the online space significantly, I want to start with this video and then maybe dive into other topics and other videos. But this is kind of a bare bones, what my experience was as a seasonal worker for three summers in a row, and what general tips I'd give you. So to give you the rundown, I grew up in Ohio. I went to Ohio University for college. I was really into beatnik and beatnik culture and on the road and Jack Kerouac. And so I had a lot of friends that were really into poetry and loved doing weird travel things. And my junior year, I had an English major friend who said, oh, I'm going to work this summer job that's really cool. I'm going to be a housekeeper. It's going to be good pay. I'm going to be able to like live in Yellowstone National Park. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, I've read Edward Abbey, I have to go. And so I applied and I knew that my friend was gonna be a housekeeper at this job. And I was trying to be a housekeeper as well because the way he explained it seemed like it was really good perks. Got the job and I remember my mom was very skeptical and she was saying, where are you going? Why are you doing this? What's this company called? The company was called Zantera. The setup of the job that I basically had that first summer was I traveled out to Yellowstone. I took the Greyhound cross country. It was like a day and a half on the bus, obscene. And I had a job in the front of the house in the cafeteria. So I was a line server, I worked as a cashier, and this was in Lake Yellowstone. And the way Zentera is set up, they operate resorts in different national parks around the country, maybe the world. And the resort that I, the one that I worked at was in Yellowstone and they had different resorts throughout the park. So there was like, oh my gosh, there was a one near the hot springs. I remember there was, but I worked in Lake Yellowstone and yeah, basically I moved into this employee dorm and they have different ages and people living in the same dorm. You get a roommate, you have shared bathrooms and we did training for front of the house and I worked as a food server and a cashier and my schedule usually throughout the week was doubles four days out of the week and then one day you had a single. So four days out of the week I was working like 10 to 12 hour shifts um, and then the other day I'd work like a six hour shift and I remember my first few paychecks, I looked at my paycheck and I was like, what is this? I worked maybe, if I work 12 hour days, four days a week, that adds up to 48 hours plus another six. So that's roughly 52 or three hours. Every paycheck they took out, taxes, health insurance, lodging, food. By the time I got my paycheck every two weeks, it was like $300. And mind you, when I was there, like so many people had problems with the pay that I was literally talking to other workers about unionizing. And the pay was different per what job you did. Like the housekeepers I knew got paid an hourly wage just like I did, but they usually finished their job sooner. I knew that people that worked front desk had sort of less of a strenuous, physically strenuous workload, but they dealt with a lot of mental stuff. And so there were different jobs, like there were housekeepers, there were people that took out the trash. I mean, there were so many jobs at Zantera. And I was there for about two and a half months. And it was really a wild time because it was my first time meeting people from all over the country. It was my first time being that far out west. I was really excited. 
But quickly I realized, oh, a lot of people are drinking. There's a lot of substance use issues. Some people were racist. Eventually through the summer, sexual assault became like a big thing that I and other friends kind of had to deal with. I got questioned by park rangers at one point. I got caught underage drinking. All of this is not saying that you should be doing <laughs> seasonal work the way I did, but this is just to show you the kind of level of chaos that I was bearing witness to. I mean, I had two, three different managers during that summer. The customers were obscene. Like there were just so many wild things happening. And I think in retrospect, what I really, really realized with Yellowstone is that they were overworking us, underpaying us, and the staff that they had looking after us, even in the dorms, were not equipped to handle like conflict or things that could arise that were like deeply traumatic and so i think that was like one of my biggest lessons from yellowstone but mind you i still knew seasonal workers after that so left college and then in 2015 i went to montana in montana that was my first summer 2015 and my group of friends were weird but i enjoyed the hotel i worked at it was like this rinky dink kind of holiday inn hotel but one big thing i loved about working at big sky was that as a housekeeper you got paid per room so if you worked at the fancier hotels you would get paid more per room but if you worked at the cheaper motel like i did the rooms would be easier to clean so you could kind of get through your day faster. So I usually went in around 8 a.m. and then I finished working around 2 or 3 p.m. that first summer. And I had friends there around my age. We were drinking a lot, partying. Not the healthiest environment. But I remember leaving and being like, I'm ready to do the next thing. And I ended up moving to Seattle in the fall and living with a friend that I made in Yellowstone. Decided after about nine months it wasn't for me. And because I knew that seasonal work was a thing, I was kind of like, oh, I don't really know what I'm doing this summer. I'd like to travel again. I applied to Montana and Zantara again the next summer. And I remember I said yes to both and I was taking the <laughs> Greyhound cross country again. And I was kind of like, during this Greyhound, I'm gonna decide which job I want. And I decided that I wanted to do Big Sky again because the pay was better. And I just feel like vibe wise, I went through a lot of traumatic things in Yellowstone. And I think I'll maybe go into those in another video because I don't really wanna dump it all here. I think I wanted to do Big Sky again because the vibes there felt better the summer before, but I remember going back to Big Sky and a lot of my friends from the summer before weren't there. Oh, and when I got to Big Sky, I had two different friends agree to pick me up from the airport. Both of them didn't show up. It was maybe 9 p.m. My phone was dead. I had $20. I slept in a field because I didn't know where to go. And then I climbed over a fence and I hitchhiked to work the next day. That's the quality of friends I had in Montana. That second summer was just a lot more intense. I remember the national politics around alt-right and fascism. And I think that was when Heather Myers was maybe run over, which was really sad. And I remember Rachel Dolezal was a big thing. And there were just weird vibes. And I started realizing more and more like my friends here are alcoholics. They're making really messed up jokes. They don't care how offensive they're being. Literally by last day there, I went to a party with a bunch of my friends and I cussed everyone out for using the N-word. And the next day I quit. I share my experience loosely because I think it's important to show that it's important and fun and good to be excited about new opportunities, but it is also important to use your discretion when in these spaces and listen to your body and your intuition because I think I was in these environments where I was so excited to be there and be far away and I wanted to prove that I was this vagabond type person and I eventually realized these spaces aren't made for everyone and they aren't comfortable for everyone and yes i can tough it out and i could be friendly or cordial with people here but that second summer especially i was honestly just traumatized and it didn't feel great i mean even i remember my 21st birthday i was in montana i got called it the f word at a bar and i threw a drink on someone and i got kicked out and so this is just to say that i think a lot of people who are white or of certain backgrounds who want this escapist identity and don't want to deal with politics and don't want to engage in politics and they just want to like have fun and work seasonally, they are a part of the problem <laughs> because they don't want to address messed up things that are happening in their community, in these spaces, and they don't want to be held accountable. And there were so many times where I would just try to raise something to people and they'd say, you're taking this too serious, you don't know how to have fun. And I'm telling these people like, what you're saying is denigrating my humanity and you claim you're my friend. These spaces of white escapism aren't as good for people of color or queer people. And so that's just something you should be aware of. And I, of course, want people to comment with any questions you have because I definitely am thinking about making this into a series because there's so many things to unpack and talk about. I could talk about each of those summers 
in a 20 minute video each because so much happened. For people that are going into seasonal work, I would say the first tip that I would kind of suggest, especially if you're a person of color or from a background where you might be a little worried about how people are gonna treat you, I would say if you can bring a buddy or know people that are gonna be working there as well. I felt good my first summer and my summers in Montana, my first summer I, knew four or five people from Ohio that were gonna be working there. Those were kind of my friends at the beginning. They ended up being friends with people I didn't like, so I found a new friend group. And then in Montana, I knew someone there from Yellowstone. And so I think going in and knowing people was helpful, but you also need to judge the quality of the people that you know. Oh my God. So buddy or not, still consider going, but knowing someone there might help you be a little less nervous. Another tip that I would have is that there are a lot of Facebook groups, forums, things like that, where people share seasonal work opportunities or share their experiences. And those are resources that you can use to one, find jobs, to ask questions, to mine people's experiences. I went into my first summer only off the word of the friend that I had. And in retrospect, I wished that I would have maybe talked to more people and gotten a larger sense of what it was like there especially for someone who's non-white because my friend was white i don't think he would have cared about the things that i did and it's important to kind of do your research and kind of mine other people's experiences if you can and with the internet at your disposal it's so much more possible um so search those forums facebook groups etc last tip that i have would be to be very clear about what you're earning and what your lodging and food is going to be like when i was in zantera the lodging, we had heat pipes that clanked all the time. The bathrooms barely had hot water. The slop they served us as employees for food. Oh, the money I made, nothing. I left that summer with basically nothing because you need to pay for things if you want to enjoy the beautiful nature and the places you're going to. You need hiking shoes. You want to pay for gas and help people pay for gas if they're driving you places. You need snacks, all that stuff. And so be very clear about what you're earning. Figure out if your job is one where you're being paid like per room as a housekeeper or what the hourly rate is or what the taxes are going to be. Like be very clear about what your budget is so you can account for what you're earning and what you need to save and how you can be there and be prepared. And lodging and food, like those are things that are going to make you feel better if they're higher quality especially if you're working so much depending on your job whether or not it's strenuous you're interacting with tourists and you might get tips i know when i was in montana my roommate was a zipline instructor he got a lot of tips every day i never got tips really as a worker in any of these jobs sometimes as a housekeeper though last tip that i would have would be definitely to have an escape fund so have enough money saved stowed away so that if things get weird or strange or you simply want to leave um you have enough money to get home whether this is a enough for a bus ticket or a plane ticket. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for hearing my experience about Yellowstone and working seasonally. Please comment below with any questions you have, any ideas or things you're curious about for other videos because I would love to talk about this more. It's something I care deeply about and I don't make this video to discourage people in any way. I just make it so that you have some things to consider when you're going to, into these situations because I believe in making educated choices and not making choices based out of fear. Till next time.